There are a few concepts in chemistry that I've sort of come to think of as the big six, sort of like the Infinity Stones from Avengers. If you understand these six concepts and you can use them effectively, then you have all of the basic tools you need to at least be halfway decent at chemistry. Today we're going to talk about the first of my big six concepts, and in my opinion it's the most important. The mole, abbreviated MOL for short, is the most important concept in chemistry because it serves as a bridge to pretty much all of the other quantities that we'll be using. The big numbers or coefficients in chemical reactions represent the numbers of moles that each compound requires to make that reaction happen. I know what you're thinking. All of this is fine, but what exactly is a mole and how do I use it? To put it simply, a mole represents the amount of substance in any sample of matter. We can use moles to convert between grams, atoms, liters, molarities, so on and so forth. Now when it comes to moles and atoms, there is always 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms in one mole. It doesn't matter what the compound is, if you have one mole of anything, you have 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd of that substance. This number is called Avogadro's number, named after the famous scientist, and you will become very comfortable with using it as we go through the rest of this course. Think of it like this. If you go to the store wanting to buy a dozen eggs, you know that you are buying 12 eggs. Well, one mole would be 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd eggs. While Avogadro's number can technically be used to count anything, we'll mainly be using it to count atoms, molecules, electrons, or ions. Let's try a little practice. How many moles are in 6.0 atoms of carbon? Here we know that one mole is equal to 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms. We can basically use this as a conversion factor for our six atoms. If we start with the 6.0 atoms that the problem gives us, using dimensional analysis, we know that there are 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms in one mole. All we have to do is divide by 6 by Avogadro's number, and we get 10 times 10 to the negative 24th. We can also find the mass if we know how many moles of substance we have, and vice versa. To do this, we use the atomic mass given in the periodic table. Atomic masses on the periodic table are given in terms of atomic mass units, but they can also signify how many grams are present in one mole of an element. So if one carbon atom has a mass of 12 AMUs, then one mole of carbon atom has a mass of 12.01 grams. Let's say that we have 2.5 grams of carbon, we can figure out how many moles we have using the atomic mass of carbon from the periodic table, which is 12.01 grams per mole. Using dimensional analysis, we can set up our equation so that our units cancel out, and our answer is left in moles, thus 21, or I'm sorry, 0.21 moles of carbon. If you can start thinking of the mole as your universal unit, you can practically get to any value. For example, if you're given the mass of a compound, you can figure out how many atoms are in that compound, but you have to figure out how many moles you have first. 